Every year, 7 million tons of chocolate are consumed worldwide. Consumption doubles every 10 years. It's the oldest food of the gods and is made from the fruit of the cacao tree. Turning these fleshy fruits into delicious chocolate is a laborious process. How are more than 200,000 chocolate bars made each day? We visited a chocolate factory to discover how cocoa is transformed into chocolate. Since its discovery in Central America over 3,000 years ago, everyone has developed a taste for chocolate. In the mid-19th century, Joseph produced the first solid chocolate bar by combining cocoa butter, sugar, and cocoa powder. In 1875, Swiss chocolatier Daniel Peter, with the help of Henri Nestle, developed the first milk chocolate by incorporating powdered milk into the mix. This gave chocolate a smoother texture and a sweeter taste. The cacao tree grows high in these warm and humid lands. Cocoa beans are the main raw material for chocolate. These white, pulpy seeds contain the key ingredient of chocolate, cocoa. Cocoa has been harvested in the same way for hundreds of years. Organic cocoa cultivation requires meticulous care and cultivation maintenance. First, the trees need to be planted. The small seeds are planted in bags filled with thick, moist soil. In a few days, the seeds start to sprout, and within four weeks, the plant reaches 30 centimeters. Although it takes three more years for them to become robust trees and start bearing fruit, strategic pruning strengthens the tree and keeps it growing. Soon, flowers begin to bloom. Small beetles pollinate the flowers. Then small pods start to appear, the fruit of the tree. The pods grow, gradually changing color. When the color transformation is complete, they are ready for harvest. It takes about five months from the first bloom to pod maturity. After waiting so long, the last thing you want is for an annoying insect to spoil this valuable fruit. That's why they protect each pod with plastic. But bugs are not the only problem for cocoa farmers. Harvesting the fruit is a challenge. They don't fall from the trees. Each one has to be cut individually, often under the blazing sun. The work requires double effort to harvest 1,500 cocoa pods per day. At harvest time, only the ripe pods are collected. If a pod is not fully ripe, the cocoa beans will be acidic and bitter. Once stacked, they are transported to other plantation facilities for processing. The seeds are manually extracted. The pod shell is rough and bulky. It is opened with a machete to extract the fruit inside. The fruit consists of an edible and sweet pulp that surrounds 30 to 50 white seeds. These are the cocoa seeds. The seeds and pulp are taken to the fermentation area, where workers place them in boxes or piles and cover them for six days. As the heat increases under the cover, fermentation begins. This process softens the bitterness and releases essential aromas. During this time, the seeds darken and start to develop their rich cocoa flavor. Natural sugars interact with oxygen. The pulp decomposes gradually. The color and chemical composition of the seeds change, becoming less acidic and developing a chocolate flavor. After proper fermentation, they are spread in the sun to dry the skin and peel. What was once pure and dark beans is now ready to become chocolate. Those that pass inspection are weighed, packaged for export, and sold to chocolate manufacturers. Depending on the size of the beans, which varies by the cocoa tree variety, it takes about 300 to 600 cocoa beans to produce one kilogram of chocolate. Millions of 65 kilogram bags, like these, arrive at the factory, where they are sorted and stacked in this large warehouse. Working in a chocolate factory might be the fantasy of some chocolate addicts. With a production of 500 tons of chocolate per year, the next factory satisfies the demand for the sweet and tempting treat. Most of the cocoa beans that arrive here come from West Africa, which produces 70% of the world's crop. A conveyor belt moves them through a cleaning system, a series of seeds that remove twigs, stones, and other debris. They first need to be cleaned and rid of any impurity or shell in a process called sieving. The next stop is a rotating drum that heats the cocoa beans to loosen their shells. They then enter a machine to remove the shell. Inside, successive rakes drag the beans through sieves, removing large pieces of the shell. 
Subsequently, a vacuum removes the remaining smaller pieces. Removing the shell exposes the inside of the cocoa bean. It's known as pulp and is the part of the bean that contains all the chocolate flavor. Once broken, the shells and pulps are separated on vibrating filters. The longer and lighter covers remain on top of the filter and are removed, while the smaller and heavier pulp fall down to release the flavor. They are roasted in a giant roaster similar to the one used for coffee. The exact time and temperature of roasting are the best kept secrets of chocolate makers. To bring out the chocolate flavor, they are roasted for half an hour. This enhances the aroma. But to make them more appetizing, they have to go through the grinder. Grinding releases the inner fat. More than 50% of the bean is fat, which is cocoa butter. Cocoa beans are ground in mills, producing a thick paste called cocoa liquor. This cocoa liquor contains both solids and cocoa butter. Subsequently, the liquor undergoes a pressing process to separate cocoa butter from the solids, which are ground more finely to obtain cocoa powder. To make chocolate, cocoa butter, sugar, and milk powder are combined. Heat and friction activate the cocoa butter, producing a pure liquid chocolate known as chocolate liquor. This chocolate liquor is mixed with sugar and milk powder inside a giant one-ton mixer, applying heat and friction until it becomes a sweet, thick, and sandy chocolate paste. The ingredients are mixed homogeneously to ensure a uniform distribution of all components. The initially sweet but not creamy paste is gradually worked with a series of five rollers. These rollers press the paste to remove moisture and refine it into smaller particles. When they finish, it is reduced to a fine, dry powder that can be used to make a delicious cup of hot chocolate. To transform chocolate powder into chocolate bars, a conveyor belt takes it to the most important machine in the chocolate manufacturing process. The next stop is a machine called a conjure. Inside the conjure, the powder is rehydrated with cocoa butter to achieve the smooth and creamy texture of chocolate. The constant rubbing between the mixture and the machine's paddles produces friction and heat that releases more flavor while smoothing the chocolate. Friction and heat once again activate the cocoa butter, returning the powder to a liquid state. At this point, more cocoa butter is added, enough to reduce the viscosity to the exact thickness needed. The longer the chocolate is mixed, the creamier, tastier, and more expensive the result. After 16 hours of mixing, the chocolate is ready to be transformed into bars. Next, a machine fills molds shaped like chocolate bars with liquid chocolate. The chocolate mixture is carefully poured into the molds. This process is controlled to avoid air bubbles and ensure that the chocolate is evenly distributed in each bar. The machine fills 336 molds per minute, producing more than 200,000 chocolate bars per day. A quick pass through the cooling tunnel hardens the chocolate. The conveyor transfers them to an elevator system that moves through a cold room for about two hours. This constant movement ensures optimal air circulation, aiding the cooling process. Once the chocolate bars are completely solidified, they are demolded. This process is done carefully to avoid damaging the bars and ensure they maintain their shape and appearance. Another machine works just as quickly, wrapping the chocolate bars. The aluminum foil found on most bars serves to preserve the chocolate, protecting it from air and moisture. Decorative wrapping is placed on top of the foil, and then the chocolate bars are ready to melt in your mouth. Like the video if you enjoyed it and share it with someone else who might be interested. Also, subscribe to this channel by activating notifications to keep learning.